Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the main arena here at Penn State Fayette Campus in Uniontown, Pennsylvania for the Men's Division II Championship of the USCAA. Welcome you to the USCAA Basketball Network. Gary Frankhauser along with Tony Hanula to bring you this action for the Division II Championship between Penn State, Wilkes-Barre, Lions, and the Jones and Wales Wildcats. Tony, this is going to be an exciting game. These, these Both teams are very athletic. They like to push it up and down the court. They like to shoot the three. And it's going to be interesting to see how things work out here this evening. Wilkes-Barre coming in from the uh, bottom part of the bracket as the three seed with a win over New Hampshire Technical Institute and Vermont Tech. 70-68 in that first game, a close one, and 80-74 to in the second game. And in the top bracket, Johnson and Wales kind of a surprise, a five seed winning against Southern Maine, 81-71, and then beating Penn State York, the winner of the PSUAC this year, 77-65 to to get to this final action here tonight. Right, and, and I can tell you this Johnson and Wales team, I saw them Sunday night, they like to shoot a lot of threes, Gary. They average 33s a game. They take 33s and they average 10 makes per game. I think the big deal for this game is going to be whether Johnson and Wales can rebound with Penn State Wilkes-Bear. And Wilkes-Bear, I'm sure, has scouted uh, Johnson and Wales throughout this tournament, and they'll have to play some very strong perimeter defense, and that may open up some things inside. It's just going to be a matter of whether Johnson and Wales can recognize that and Penn State Wilkes-Barre can uh, get up and down the court with them and score with them. So both teams high scoring, and uh, we're interested to see how this athletic activity comes to play here this after this evening. The starters for uh, Penn State Wilkes-Barre, number 10, Jerron Dawson Johnson, number 12, William Pierce, number 2, Amir Biddle, number 24, Jordan Williams, and number 30, Kevin Silverberg. On the Johnson and Wales Wildcats side, number one, Marley Poole. Number 10, Kajan, I get that right, Madden McAfee. 11, Robert Hobson. Number 12, P.J. Gill. Number 15, Christian Cresswell. And we'll give you some more particulars on each of them throughout the evening. We'll turn things over now to the PA announcer here at the main arena at Penn State Fayette for the national anthem and the introduction of our starting lineups. starting lineups. It uh, also noted earlier in a couple of the games, Tony, it's really interesting to see where these players come from all over the country, basically. It is amazing, I'll tell you, just to, just to recruit and get players to come. I mean, we saw a player in this first game with uh, the Central Maine team that came from El Paso, Texas. Yeah, and also one from uh, the, um, the Netherlands. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's, it's interesting to see where they come from is right. Canary Islands. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Deron Dawson Johnson, he's from George Washington High School in Philadelphia. P.J. Gill. Presswell, Catawba Valley, Shelby, North Carolina. Dan Larkin, their coach there, 21 and 10, 9 and 0 in the East Metro Conference coming into this championship. Amir Biddle out of Arlington, Virginia. Jerron Dawson Johnson from Philadelphia. William Pierce from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. There we go, all the way from Detroit, Michigan. The Motor City. And from the Bronx, New York, Kevin Silverberg. And Silverberg, their main three-point shooter, Gary, made 55 threes on the year. You'll see him take his share here tonight. They set a lot of offense up for him to get open. Now let him fly. Johnson and Wales wearing the royal blue uniforms and Penn State Wilkes-Barre in the gray uniforms, right to left for Johnson Wales to start the first half. Here we go, championship action for the USCAA Division II. And I think we're gonna see a very good game. Both of these teams pretty evenly matched. And I think we're gonna see a lot of running as well. <laughs> Try to jump at, out at early. At this level, it never ceases to amaze me, the talent. There's a lot of talent on both of these teams. Here we go. Tip controlled by Wilkes-Barre all the way back in the back court. That's number 30, Kevin Silverberg, and he hands off to the point guard number 10. That's Jerron Dawson Johnson. Silverberg, left wing. Picking down low against a 2-3 zone to the hoop and score it. That's number 24, Jordan Williams, starting things off for the Lions of Wilkes-Barre. They were able to get that ball down low pretty easily there, Garrison. I'm sure Johnson and Wells better tighten up that defense in the inside. Man-to-man -man defense off glass and good. A runner that time by number 12, P.J. Gill. Just averages about 4.3 a game and right off the bat shows his athletic ability. Silverberg looks for that high screen pick and roll. And scored again for Jordan Williams. Fundamental basketball there. Tony pick and roll worked to perfection. Yes, it did. Nice entry pass as well. Williams with the very easy layup. Two in a row for him. Hobson in the corner. Long three on the way off the rim. No good by Marley Poole. Wilkes Baird back quickly. Stolen away. Madden McAfee with the steal, and he's going to try to take it himself. He'll bring it back out and reset. High screens against a man-to-man -man defense for Wilkes-Barre. A lot of dribbling, thought about the three. That time was Hobson. Back to Madden McAfee. Baseline drive, cut off there nicely by the Wilkes-Barre defense. Three on the way, short off the front of the iron. That time by Madden McAfee. Kajon Madden McAfee, the sophomore from Harrisonburg, Virginia. Now Wilkes-Barre with a Four to two lead. Back on the offensive side. All kind of contact. That's going to be a bucket plus one. Wow, they counted that. Little continuation there. Yeah, number two with the score. And that's Am Amir Biddle. Foul called on. P.J. Gill. P.J. Gill, that's his first, team first here in the first half. I don't think Gill was too happy about that call either, but. I'm, I'm kind of surprised that they didn't call it on the floor, but they gave Biddle the two anyway. 
Well, the theory there being he gathered the ball in an attempt to shoot, and therefore it is a shooting foul. Misses the on the foul shot, though. Rebound offensively or defensively for Wilkes-Barre. To the hoop again, score it for Kvittle. Kvittle, he's four early points. You see, that's the point we tried to make, Gary. We did. Long three again off the mark. So you live by the three and die by the three. So far, no success for Johnson and Wales. Well, and the thing of it is they're averaging. They're being out rebounded. The margin of rebounds minus two where Wilkes-Barre is plus nine. So that's the difference. they got to try to get a little board action here, get some put-back shots of their own. Stolen away. Good defense there. Position defense by the Wilkes-Barre. That was... Biddle, too, and he'll take it to the hoop again. Biddle on fire here early. He's on fire, but the thing of it is he's on fire from five feet. That's everything, all layups. Everything yeah. was a layup, so nice job by Biddle to get to the basket each time. On fire with intensity. On the left, Marley Poole now. He'll try to the three in it. Nothing but three-point attempts so far for Johnson and Wales. And that's what we said. They average 30 shots a game from behind the arc. No offensive rebounds. Yeah, there's nobody under the boards. That's, and that's going to be a huge deal here tonight. Three on the way. No good that time. That was Dawson Johnson, but another offensive rebound for Wilkes-Barre. They'll reset. New shot clock. Yeah, and I think you're going to be surprised, too, at how much the shot clock actually gets under 10, even with both of these teams. They average, both of them average around 80 points a game, but it's surprising how many times it gets down to 10. Three on the way, no, did not draw iron that time for Williams. Quickly back come the Wildcats. Three on the way again, no good. This time by Madden McAfee. And so far, without seeing the statistics, I'm saying 0 for 5 from three-point range. Oh, yeah. Well, you know it's an over. Silverberg, good ball fake. Tried to go baseline, cut off nicely. That could be an offensive foul, and it is. Just put his shoulder down and drove it into the defender. The defender does not have to give ground in that situation. The foul called there on number 12. That's uh, William Pierce, his first team first. Good defense that time by P.J. Gill. Yeah, and you were right there. Pierce just dropped that shoulder, tried to create his own space. That called for the offensive foul. That's his first team first. Outside again. Three on the way, no good. Another offensive rebound, no, I'm sorry, defensive rebound. No one inside there for the Wildcats. Now, and Hobson, normally a pretty reliable three-point shooter. He led the USCA in percentage this year in three-point shots. Yeah, that's a, you got to shoot your way out of it, I guess. If you're a shooter, you just got to keep letting them fly, and eventually you'll uh, start hitting a few. That's it. Turnover there by Wilkes-Barre gives it back. To Johnson and Wales with a 10 to 2 advantage for Penn State Wilkes-Barre. Good ball move that time and reverse score it. Christian Cresswell with the bucket for the Wildcats makes it 10 to 4. Under 15 minutes to go in the first half. Power move in but blocked away nicely there by Cresswell. So he scores on one end and rejects the shot on the other end. This will be a media timeout with 14.53 to go here in the first half. And, Tony, um, we thought about, we talked about in the pregame the three-point shooting, three point shooting by Johnson and Wales, and they certainly came out firing, but no success as of yet. Well, they're, they're pretty streaky, though, Gary. We saw the other night where Hobson made six and Madden McAfee made five in their game against Penn State York. So it's, uh, it's one of those things. It's either feast or famine for them, but... I can tell you that uh, Hobson's a pretty streaky shooter, and once he gets lit up a little bit, he's ready to go. So yeah. I can see them closing the gap pretty quickly if they can knock down a couple threes. I'll take this opportunity to pay some homage to some of our sponsors. Northwest Design, Inc. Northwest Design, Inc. is the official merchandiser of the national championship here at Penn State. They provide an outstanding selection of apparel that is fully customizable. That's a tough word. <laughs> Don't miss out on the memory of the 2019 Basketball National Championships. To purchase your official 2019 USCAA National Basketball Championship merchandise from Northwest Designs, Inc., visit their booth here at the Community Center located near the food court while you're here. 
or go online to order with Northwest Designs, Inc. And East Bay Rawlings. Rawlings is the official basketball of the USCAA and the 2019 USCAA National Basketball Championship. Visit Rawlings.com for a wide variety of baseball equipment and gear and basketball equipment. Also, East Bay is a proud partner of the USCAA. Visit eastbay.com for your sporting good needs. Here we go. Wilkes Bear with possession. Out of the timeout. On top there with the ball handling, Jerron Dawson Johnson. Now they try to get it inside, and I think that's been the strategy for Wilkes Bear, but they'll take a 12 foot jumper there in, in and out, fighting for the rebound. Got it, but now we're going to have a foul called. Yeah, I think they're going to call Hobson for the grab on the underneath there, which they did. That's Hobson's first foul. Pretty nice block there by Cresswell, but up top, yeah, he uh, thought the foul was going to be on him, but it was on Hobson, so his first, and it'll be a two shot opportunity for Jordan Williams. 77% free throw shooter. He has four already here this evening for Penn State Wilkes Bear. First one on the way, no good, a little strong. Yeah, and I think that's a key, too. Once we get into the latter part of this game, you're going to need both of these teams to shoot well from the free throw line, but they're both around 66, 67 percent. LeVon Knight Souls checking in for Wilkes Bear. Second one in and out, no good. Got a body contact on that rebound. Back comes Johnson and Wales. Just four points here, over five minutes in. Well, as you mentioned, they just started out cold today. That's it. And this man-to-man uh, -man defense is uh, providing some benefit to Penn State Wilkes-Barre. They take it to the hoop, swatted away inside that time. Two-handed block by LaVon Knight Souls, the six-foot-six -six sophomore guard, home, hometown product of Wilkes-Barre, Myers High School. And he got up. He was perfect timing for him. Nice block there by Souls. Good stop and go move there by Madden McAfee. Three on the way again, no good that time by Cresswell. No, he had to throw it up. He, shot clock was expiring. He had to get the shot up no matter what. Man-to-man -man defense now by Johnson and Wales. Silverberg backs it out, now gets it inside, and they're going to work inside as much as they can, but unable to finish that time was Jordan Williams. A runner one-hander, floater won't go that time, but again by Hobson. The lid on the hoop right now for the Wildcats. Getting ready to check in is Jackson Baylark, the 6'4 freshman forward from Marietta, Georgia. He gave him a spark in their first game here. Hoping he can do the same thing here. Coach Larkin's trying to change some strategy. Silverberg with the runner, but a nice weak side rebound and finish there by Souls. Yeah, right 12 to 4, I'm sorry. No, me. no, you're fine. Right now, wilkes -Barre just beating Johnson and Wells to every rebound, Gary. Baseline and tough shot there by Marley Poole. Finally gets on the scoreboard for him. He's averaging close to 15 a game, his first two. Now the nice thing is Poole, he can play both inside and outside. He's got a nice all-around game. Dawson Johnson swing it all the way around to Silverberg. Again inside, they're going to get it in there as much as possible, and Williams providing benefits. Well, you can't blame him. He's just using his size and strength. 6'9", he's just got a size advantage over everybody on the Johnson and Wells team. They're a tough time matching up inside with him. Might have got away with a walk there, but got it up to the hoop was P.J. Gill unsuccessful and another defensive rebound by Wilkes-Barre. They have to be out rebounding the Wildcats by a large margin here in the first half. Oh, it's got to be double digits to single digits. I can assure you of that. Silverberg with the left. Got the roll. Kevin Silverberg, and there's going to be a timeout call by Johnson and Wales. They want to talk about it. Coach Dan Larkin, the head coach for Johnson and Wales does not like what he's seeing right now with a 10-point advantage. Wilkes-Barre on top, 16-6. to six. And with that, we'll touch on a few more sponsors. 
Jack Monick Photography is the official photographer of the 2019 USCAA National Basketball Championship. Visit Jack's booth here at the community center during the tournament or visit the USCAA photo store following the championship at theuscaa.com and clicking on the banner ad for the photo store. Uniontown Hospital is the premier medical facility in our area here in Uniontown. The Uniontown Hospital supports the USCAA Basketball National Championship. Uniontown Hospital is located just minutes from Penn State Fayette Campus and is available to help you with all of your medical needs. Out of the timeout, Johnson Wales looking for some offensive punch. A lot of one-on-one -on -one dribbling, high picks. And looking for that three-point, stolen away. Back now, quickly comes Wilkes-Barre, and there's going to be a foul at the hoop. Going to the hoop strong was LaVon Knight-Souls, and he was fouled by number one, Marley Poole, his first, team third. I think, actually, Knight-Souls was pretty lucky there. He lost control of that ball. He was fortunate not to lose it, and secondly, fortunate that Poole fouled him. A little strange foul shooting. He's about five feet behind the foul line. He's taking. <laughs> but it's good. <laughs> He's almost taking a three-pointer, and they're giving it to him from 15 feet rather than 19-9. Whatever works. That's it. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't <laughs> like that 15-footer. He likes the 18-footer. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> Three on the way, no good that time by Poole. Another defensive rebound this time by David Rogers, who just checked in. And both teams use a lot of bench. You're going to see eight, nine, possibly ten players played by both teams here tonight. A lot of picking and rolling on this offensive power. Then, wow, nice body control that time by Souls. He checks in with six points here in the first half. That was a sweet move underneath. Just reversed it so it wasn't blocked on the other side. Almost a turnover there. Trying to decipher this Wilkes-Barre defense. Wildcats unsuccessful. Oh, good baseline drive, but didn't finish. Kind of thought he was going to get fouled or a block there. Poole did not finish at the hoop. You know, and the thing of it was, they had to run because the shot clock was down. It was under 10. And we said, I, I did the Johnson Well Southern Main game the other night. I, was, I couldn't believe how many times the shot clock went under 10 for two teams that score in the 80s. Souls is dominating now inside. Souls and Williams providing the majority of the offense for Wilkes Bear. Well, you're getting. It's getting a little bit out of hand here, Tony. 22 to 6. Well, getting out of hand, but we saw Johnson and Wills come back the other day against Penn State York. They were down seven at half. Had a fantastic second half outscoring York 49 to 30. So maybe they just need to get loose a little bit, Gare. Well, we certainly want to see a competitive game as that foul was called on Kevin Silverberg, his first. Just a second team foul on Wilkes Bear. And we're under 10 minutes to go here in the first half. Media timeout. 22 to 6, 9.54 to go here in the first half. And the USCAA would like to thank the Penn State Fayette, Fayette Chamber of Commerce, Laurel Highlands Visitors Bureau, Fay Penn Economic Development Council, Seven Springs Mountain Resort, the Herald Standard, especially Conduit Manufacturing, WMBS, and Penn State Fayette for hosting the 2019 USCAA National Basketball Championship. Without these partners, the event would not be possible. And this is a growing event here in our area, Tony, and it's been received very nicely by the fans of basketball in the area and the businesses that support this uh, national championship each year. Well, and I think all the teams have an enjoyable time as well, Gary. They're treated well, get to see a little bit of southwestern Pennsylvania, and I think they really enjoy the facility here at the Penn State Fayette campus. I mean, this gym here is beautiful, and I'm not so sure too many players like this have played in a facility like this I mean it's it's just fabulous and uh, I know I've heard a lot of remarks throughout the week I think everybody's enjoying it and I'm sure every team wants to come back as well a lot to do up at Seven Springs too yes sir 
B.J. Gill controlling out front for the Wildcats. Drops it off to Hobson, lost the handle momentarily. He'll step back and shoot a two, still can't find the range. Pulled down there by Souls. wilkes Bear with the run out. To the hoop, swatted away that time and saved inside. Nice play there. That's gonna be a foul called. Swatted away initially by, I think number 23, Jackson Baylark, who just checked in and saved in to play by number 11. It was Hobson, Hobson saved it, yeah, and saved it through his legs. All right, and a foul called. Try to see who that foul was called on. They called that on number 15, which would have been David Rogers. His first team third. Right. Nice baseline drive this time. Still no finish, but gets his own rebound and puts it back. That's Malik Bullock. Six-foot junior guard from Raleigh, North Carolina. Bullock did a nice job following his own shot there. He went strong to the basket, but had two Wilkes-Barre defenders to beat. Way to follow up your own shot. Stop and jump and had it knocked away, so no travel call. Good long three on the way at the end of the shot clock there that time by Khalil White. I think White could have taken a little time. There was still eight seconds on the shot clock. Has a lot of body contact there, and I think on the drive, Hobson will be fouled by number two, and that is Amir Biddle. That's his first, team fourth. We're gonna have Jerron Dawson Johnson check back in, as well as Jordan Williams, Rogers to take a seat, and Silverberg to take a little breather here as well for Penn State Wilkes-Barre. Uh, Souls and Williams in the game at the same time. That looks strong. Bank shot from deep, that time by Zyron, Zirion Wilkins. So Coach Larkin trying to find a hot hand. Coach Larkin's trying to find a defensive matchup for this Wilkes-Barre team right now. And just a spin move inside, and Williams connects again. Eight points for Williams. Too much body contact on the drive that time. That's going to be on... Jerron Dawson Johnson is first, team fifth. Yeah, he was kind of riding P.J. Gill as he went to the basket. And it's amazing they're playing a man-to-man -man defense. Johnson and Wales spreading the offense, but they just can't get any easy buckets. To the hoop again, just not high enough off the board that time by Bullock. 24 to eight. 7.56 to go, foul called on the play, and that's going to be on number three, Bullock. Yeah, Bullock, he didn't think he fouled, but I think he kind of got the reach there, kind of grabbed a little bit, got called for his first foul. Team, but, team fourth. They're going to make Hobson tuck his shirt in first. Triggering in, Biddle. Hands off to Dawson Johnson now. Swing it up way out on top. Williams, unfamiliar territory that far from the hoop. All kind of contact. That's going to be a blocking foul. That's gonna, going to the hoop was Biddle. And a foul called there. That's going to be on Gill. That's going to be his second. That could be a big foul. Gill, pretn't much he and Madden McAfee carried this Johnson and Wales team the other day against York. Came off the halftime break. Madden McAfee scored 18 of his 23 in the second half, and Gill scored 11 of his 14 in the second half as they outscored York 49-30 for the big win yesterday. Biddle successful on the first foul shot, a 63% free throw shooter. Well, and so far, we've yet to see Johnson and Wales go to the line. Second one good, so basically three players for Wilkes-Barre carrying the scoring load. Silverberg with a deuce, but other than him, it's been Biddles, Souls, and Williams with all the points. And it's funny, too, because they've played eight or nine players, Gary, which is yeah. interesting, but they're, they're relying on the big fellas underneath is what's happening. Good weak side look, but too strong, knocked away. Back comes Wilkes-Barre with the run out. Off glass, no good, but Souls with the rebound, he traveled. 
Yeah, Souls actually probably should have just taken that ball straight yeah, up for the layup. I don't know why he tried to come back out with it. Once he had the rebound, I guess he didn't realize no one was on him. Yeah, I mean, he should have just taken it strong to the basket, just put it back up. But for some reason, he tried to dribble back out of the pack. He got called for the travel. 26 to 8. Johnson Wells trying to answer. Still nothing from three point range. Bodies on the floor, and Johnson Wells comes away with the loose ball. Foul line jumper, got it. Finally scoring, that was number three, Malik Bullock. He has four. 26 to 10. Clock now running at 6.45 to go. Inside again, power move to the hoop, the big boy, Jordan Williams. 10 first half points for Williams, all at point blank range. <laughs> I don't know why you'd put him out front, that's for sure. Nice driving shot there by Marley Poole. Coach Larkin going to put Cresswell back in, trying to put some more size back underneath to stop Williams. He's just dominating underneath and getting a whole lot of easy shots. Need a drop down double team when he gets the ball, so he has to kick it back out at least. Three on the way and score it, but it wouldn't matter. Jaron Dawson Johnson with his first three. Well, the thing of it is, I'm kind of surprised Johnson and Wells doesn't go to his own defense to try to make Wilkes-Barre beat you from the outside. You're right, Tony. Another three missed and the breakout two on one. Souls with the Euro step and the score from the reverse. He's giving them fantastic minutes off the bench. He's got Ooh. 10 points. Wow, I saw an elbow fly. And that's going to be the call. And that's going to be on number three, Malik Bullock, his second. Elbow to the chin. Well, it's, you don't need that kind of action. That's his second foul. He's coming off the bench. And they're also uh, eliminated an opportunity at the hoop. Well, they can't afford that. Down 21 already. We've got 530 to go here in the first half. They need to find some type of offense or some type of defensive stops. Give Wilkes-Barre credit for uh, good strategy so far, taking it inside. And here's Souls has it knocked, and they're going to call a foul. i got a feeling they're probably going to call it on Cresswell on the reach, and they are. Cresswell just kind of reached across there. And it's going to be uh, team seventh. So bonus time for Penn State Wilkes-Barre at the line. LeVon Knight Souls, just a 54% free throw shooter, but he's two for two so far here this evening, and he likes that 18 footer. Yes, he does. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe get a point and a half for being that far back. <laughs> I'm sure you don't teach that, but maybe when he was young, he always went over the line. That could be with that little jumper. Tell you what, though, he's got nice form yes, from the he line. Does. It four doesn't look four. like a 54% free throw no, shooter, that's for sure. Lead now out to 23. Fade away off glass, no good. An offensive rebound and put back and score it. Wow. Loris Lawson off the bench, six foot six junior forward from Raleigh, North Carolina, averaging just 1.6 per game, but he's over that already. Two so points and a chance for a three point play. Yeah, but you said something that. I don't think we've heard. It's almost like a Bigfoot sighting. Johnson and Wells with an offensive rebound. I'm sure that's the first one here tonight. And they get another one, but lose it. Yeah, they've got to find a way to hit the boards. Actually, to stop the inside action on offense and then try to get some boards. Oh, a, man. That was almost an illegal screen, I think, but they're going to call a defensive foul. Screening inside, Jordan Williams kind of turned his hip and allowed for the driving lane. I'm with you. I, oh. I, I, think that, I think that should have been a foul on Williams. And I think they're that's gonna, what they're talking about. Well, you know what? I don't know if they're talking about intentional or what. That's not a flagrant foul. Wow. I, 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 gotta, I disagree with that. So I mean, you, you can say that, but he's trying to fight through that screen, and it's an illegal screen at that. So that's number 25, Lawson. His first and a flagrant foul is going to be – an opportunity for 
Wilkes-Barre at the line, and that'll be a media timeout before we shoot these foul shots. With 4.58 to go, we're under five minutes. And let's take a look at the sponsors, try to get through these so that we are sure we give the proper due to each one of our sponsors. Fayette Waste is a family-owned business that has been providing a professional, courteous, and reliable service to their customers for over 35 years. That's older than you, Tom. <laughs> Every day, Fayette Waste strives to maintain this excellent excellence of service for their loyal customers and appreciates their continued patronage. Fayette Waste. Henry and Stewart Audiology. Henry and Stewart Audiology is family owned and has been operating since 1978. That's when you graduated. Today, right. over 30 years later, Henry and Stewart Audiology continues the tradition of professional friendly service. Henry and Stewart Audiology offers exceptional service at three convenient locations in the Pittsburgh area, Uniontown, Carmichael's, and Connellsville. That's Henry and Stewart Audiology. Cintosh uniforms, you see those everywhere. Whether you're in a small business owner or a large corporation, Cintosh can tailor a uniform rental program to fit your budget and needs. Cintosh delivers comfortable and professional looking uniforms and apparel to provide your employees their daily workday needs. Cintosh uniforms. At the line after that flagrant foul call will be number two, Amir Biddle. With a 35 to 14 Wilkes Bear lead over Johnson and Wales. Be a two shot opportunity for Biddle. It's the first, making him three for three at the line. Second one on the way, plus the possession. Yeah, this could be a huge trip right here for Penn State Wilkes Bear. I mean, already up 22, less than five to go here in this first half. Too strong on that one. Yeah, but they're going to get another chance at it. They're going to get to take the ball out underneath their own basket. At the point of the foul. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I was in agreement with you, Gary. I thought I thought Williams was moving, and I thought that Base. Lawson just tried to fight his way through it. Out on top now, Biddle will control. And a man defense by Johnson and Wales. As you said, they may need to change up a little bit. That's got to be an offensive foul. Nothing called. Wow. He stood his ground. Give him credit. That was Lawson again. Yeah. Did a nice job on defense there. Pulley to the hoop. Scoop. Got it. Wow. That's what we're talking about, the athletes at this level, Tony. That was just an unbelievable body control display. Well, as we mentioned, Marley Poole, he can play inside and out. And I think at this point in time that Johnson and Wells are going to have to try to forego on the three-pointers and try to run some offense. I think they were able to get underneath and make some easy layups if they chose so choose. No good on the foul shot. Who was that foul called on, Tony? Uh, you know what? I did not see that, Gary. I'll check it out here. Now inside, trying to get it inside to Williams. They called that foul on Khalil White. That's his first. They're going to give this one to Lawson. This is his second. 6'6", six, six junior forward. Came Williams off the, to the bench. Line. Yeah, now he's going to take a seat with two fouls here, 425 to go. Big man Williams, a 77% free throw shooter. He moves all the way up to the line. Imagine that. <laughs> Got it. Got a nice stroke, though. And you're right, the inside play of Williams and Knight Souls has really been the difference in this game. And Biddle slashing to the basket. I mean, there, there's all your points, really, for Wilkes-Barre. Two for two on that trip. 38 to 16 with 420 to go here in the first half. Good jump defense there by the big man Williams. Get it inside with the left. No score. Offensive rebound. Nice bank shot there with the glass. Christian Cresswell now has four. Johnson Wales now has to concentrate on keeping this thing at least somewhat manageable before the end of the first half. Maybe get a little bit of a run here in the last four minutes. That's close to an offensive foul there again. Inside to Williams. 
He'll fade away this time and score. Goes up strong sometimes, spin move sometimes, that time a fadeaway. To the hoop, who can't score at that time was Poole, gets his own rebound. And give credit there to Marley Poole, the stick to itiveness. Allowed for two opportunities at the hoop and now a foul. And that's going to be on Williams, his first. Yeah, and Poole did a nice job again following his own shot. Went to the basket strong. Actually thought he should have made that layup anyway, but couldn't get it to go, but followed up his own shot. Got the shooter's roll on that foul shot. Give him seven. Poole was 63% free throw shooter. He's the high man for Johnson and Wells here tonight so far. With just 20 first half points, back to a 20 point game, 40 to 20. Tipped away momentarily there from Dawson Johnson, but he gets it back. This is Biddle, he looks to create. Souls too, he's not, he's gonna take it to the hoop and almost finish that one, but unsuccessful. Off the glass, no good that time for Madden McAfee. A breakout for Wilkes-Bear. Another Euro step for the hoop and the foul. That's going to be Khalil White with the bucket. Now he's in the books. Foul called on. No, they're going to have to. They're going to have to correct that. That's going to be on Baylark. That's not. Lawson is not in the game at this point in time, so it's going to be on 23, Baylark. Yeah, they're going to talk about it over here. Who's that foul on? Yeah. I think oh, it was they gave 15, it on, Yeah, Cresswell. they gave it on Cresswell. Okay. Well, that's going to be Cresswell. He second. was the only one back there defending, so. Yeah. I mean, I don't know where they got the 25, but. And at this point in time, I mean, Wilkes-Barre beating Johnson and Wells back, beating them to the boards and beating them to the – Lane and getting a whole lot of easy shots here this first half. Checking in for Wilkes-Barre is Stevenson, Dominique Stevenson, a six foot two junior guard from Rochester. Pass inside, back out now. Poole tried to take it to the hoop, nowhere to go with it, threw it off a Wilkes-Barre defender with 12 seconds to go here on the shot clock. Another opportunity for Johnson and Wales. Yeah, I think Poole probably should have just slashed through the baseline there. He tried to throw it back out past the three-point lane. Should have just should have just went up strong. Probably could have drawn another foul and sent himself back to the line. Some preventative officiating there. Long three on the way, no good. Rebound pulled down by Williams. So Hobson just cannot find the range. Averaging 17.7 points per game. Has not hit the scoring column yet. Yeah, and that's tough, and they rely on him for a lot of three-point shooting. Williams has a green light from everywhere, it appears, and that's going to be out of bounds. They're going to give it back to Johnson Wales. Wow. Ooh. They're going to say that was off Pierce, but. I'm not I'm arguing, not so. so. No, nobody's arguing, but. They, plus, they got a 22-point lead, so I don't think they're going to argue just yet. Ooh, that's going to be a block. Oh, offensive foul. Wow. Wow. Not sure I agree with that one either, but it's going to be an offensive foul called there on Hobson, his second. Yeah, I don't know if Biddle kind of took a flop there, but Hobson, I mean, really didn't, didn't create too much of an advantage for himself, but he's yeah. going to get called for his second foul. Yeah, I'm not sure that... Um, The defender had established defensive position. I don't think so at all, either. Says White. He'll launch a long three. Off the rim, no good. Long rebound to Biddle. He can't finish. In there among the trees, coming out with it is Poole. Stop and pop. That's a tough shot when you're moving that quick yep. to gather yourself and shoot a three-pointer. Minute 30 to go. And actually, they, they had numbers. 
They had a three-on-two break there. I thought Poole should have just went through the lane, drawn the defense, and dumped it off for an easy layup. There's Williams on the baseline, and he gets it in there. It's going to be tough to stop. Putting on a show, Jordan Williams here in the first half. 16 already. There's no answer for Williams underneath either. wilkes Bear cheering on their defense. Hobson will let another one go. Finally, Robert Hobson for three. Makes it 44 to 23, and we're under 45 seconds to go here in the first half. Timeout called with 44 seconds to go. Coach LaShawn Hammett for Penn State wilkes Bear calls a timeout, and why not? You lose them if you don't use them. That's right. You might as well give your team a little breather, set up something, try to extend this lead in the last 44 seconds of with the first half. 24 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Let's look at these sponsors one last time. Murray Auto Electric and Radio Communications offers full service auto electrical and communication repair. Founded in 1976, Murray Auto Electric and Radio Communications is a family owned business with two locations to serve you, Delmont and Ford City, Pennsylvania. With a staff of ASE certified technicians, Murray Auto Electric can work on any electric issues in your vehicle. Murray Auto Electric can fix the wires and batteries in any vehicle, tractors, golf carts, motorbikes, and even snow plowing equipment. I wouldn't touch any of those electrical systems. No, <laughs> but I will say that if you need your snow blower or snow plows taken care of, you might have needed it this week yep. here in tropical Fayette County. Now with 18 seconds on the shot clock, 36 on the game clock, step back three on the way. I'm not sure that that's what was planned out of that timeout, but they got it back with a new shot clock. No, they didn't, no. no, did not reset. Three on the way, wow, that's a dagger. Score it for Dominic Stevenson, a three-pointer to the hoop. Now we got a blocking foul on the baseline, and I believe that's going to be on Williams. If that is, it'll be his second. Wow. I actually thought that foul was going to be on Khalil White underneath. I thought he kind of stepped out, but they're going to call that on Williams. And Williams is going to sit down for the last 15.2 seconds. They're going to bring in number 21, Mata Brua. Six foot seven, senior forward, Dover, Delaware. It's a good move there by Coach Hammett to not allow Williams to pick up a third foul here in the first half. He can't afford that. Foul shot good by Marley Poole. He's now three for four from the line. Yeah, the leading score tonight so far for Johnson and Wales, nine points. Gets his own rebound again, up to the hoop. Can't get it to go, wow. 10 seconds to go, held ball. That's going to be back to Johnson and Wales with 10 arrow. seconds to go. Yeah, possession arrow going the other way. Good hustle by Poole. He's trying to carry this team by himself. No box out at the foul line by wilkes -Bear. To the hoop, nowhere to go. Just kick it back out to Hobson, and he'll hit. Two late threes by Robert Hobson. Cuts it to a 20-point lead, 47 to 27 at halftime. Penn State Wilkes Bear on top of Johnson and Wales. We'll be back with halftime statistics here at the Penn State Fayette Campus Main Arena in Uniontown, Pennsylvania. The USCAA Basketball Network bringing you the Division II National Championship.
Welcome back to the main arena here at Penn State Fayette Campus, Uniontown, Pennsylvania, the USCAA Division II National Championship game between Penn State Wilkes-Barre and Johnson and Wales Wildcats. 47 to 27 is our halftime score, Tony, and uh, the statistics do tell the story. The statistics do tell a story, Gary, early on. Penn State Wilkes-Barre, 18 for 33 in that first half, shooting almost 55% from the field compared to only 11 for 36 for Johnson and Wales at a 31% clip. Johnson and Wales only two for 15 in that first half, and those were both made by Robert Hobson towards the end of the first half. Yeah, those were late threes. Yeah, those were late. The only good thing about that is Hobson, as we mentioned, streaky shooter, if he can start hitting, it might be able to get back Johnson and Wales back into this game, but right now they're down 20. You know, a couple other glaring things. We talked about it. We thought that the rebound discrepancy would be a whole lot more, but really Penn State Wilkes-Barre out-rebounding Johnson and Wales by 8, 27, 19, but they had 19 defensive rebounds, eight offensive rebounds, but... Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't recall the nine offensive rebounds on the Johnson and Wales side. No, I, I don't either. I actually thought they might have put them on the wrong side because I, it, I think at the very most, I think Johnson and Wales might have had five offensive rebounds in that first half. And, and that would have been by Poole, who had four of them. So I'm not, uh, not himself, so sure. But, yeah. yeah. Turnover-wise, both teams pretty even, six to five. Uh, Will, uh, Johnson and Wales with one more turnover. And Wilkes-Barre went to the line. They were nine of 14, whereas Johnson and Wales only three of six. So I think I wouldn't be surprised to see Johnson and Wales come out in the second half. I mean, grant you, they're going to play man-to-man -man defense. I think they might, if they drop back into a zone defense, might be a little bit different because Jordan Williams right now, he's he can do anything he wants underneath his basket. They have no way to stop him. And you got to figure, too, even with Biddle and Souls, you know, they're, they're just having their way with Johnson and Wells underneath the hoop. Looking at the scoring recap for Penn State Wilkes-Barre, Khalil White off the bench for two, Dominique Stevenson a late three, Jerron Dawson Johnson, a three. Amir Biddle with nine. And LaVon Knight Souls comes off the bench for 12, including four for four from the line. Jordan Williams with 16 first half points, all from very close range. And Kevin Silverberg with two. On that Johnson Wales Wildcats side, leading the way, Marley Poole with nine. Malik Bullock for four. Robert Hobson, those two late threes for six. P.J. Gill for two, Christian Cresswell with four, and Loris Lawson with two. 47 in the first half for Penn State Wilkes-Barre, 27 for Johnson and Wales. And like I said, we're just going to have to see the defensive intensity turned up. Now, grant you, they were down, Johnson and Wales, were, they were down seven yesterday against Penn State York, outscored them by 19 in the second half, and that's what they're going to have to do here this, today in order to try to capture this USCA national championship. And we say this all the time, and you see it, especially in Division I basketball, the beginning of the third or the second half this in this instance is going to be crucial for both teams, really. From Johnson and Wales' standpoint, they have to come out and establish some intensity and get back into this game, maybe cut it to possibly 12 or 10 going into the second half of the second half. And from the Wilkes-Barre perspective, maintain their intensity to not allow that to occur. If I was Wilkes-Barre, the, the only thing I would do is if Johnson and Wells does not change their defense up, I'd continue to go with the game plan you started out with in the first half. I'd pound everything down low to Jordan Williams. And one thing, Gary, I mean, we, we saw this in the first game that we did today uh, in, the, in the ladies' championship. You had Central Maine leading by 19 over Villa Maria. And, it, you know, at the halftime stats, and next thing you know, Bill and Marie actually cut that lead down to seven at one point in time. I thought they were actually going to be able to take the lead. That actually got it down to five. Yeah. And, and it was as much as 21 at one point. So you're right. Anything can happen. And uh, as you said, you've seen Johnson and Wales throughout this tournament turn it up a notch and start hitting those threes. And that's the benefit of the three, as we said. You live by it and die by it. If they can get hot and start hitting some threes and even – you know, counter threes with twos uh, with Wilkes-Barre, they can get back into this game. So we're going to have this second half action here momentarily, about three minutes before the second half starts. And we're going to, again, honor some of our 
sponsors here. Medbeds Pharmacy is a pharmacy located in Charleroi, Pennsylvania. Visit Medfeds Pharmacy for all your pharmaceutical needs. Medfeds Pharmacy in Charleroi, Pennsylvania. First Federal Savings and Loan Association of Greene County, local banking institution here in Fayette and Greene County, also Washington County, appreciates the relationship that has been built with so many people and businesses within their communities and looks forward to many more years of providing personalized service and modern banking products. First Federal Savings and Loan Association of Greene County provides a high level of commitment to their customers and neighborhoods. Please visit one of their area locations for all of your banking needs. And additionally, Community Bank is another local bank here that's been around for over 100 years. Community Bank has been personally involved in their community. Business owners, nonprofit groups, government agencies, school administrations, individual personal accounts, all your mortgage needs and everything necessary for their friends and neighbors. By taking the time to get to know you, your neighbors at Community Bank are better, better able to serve your needs. The Barton Flower Shop of Uniontown has been providing flowers and arrangements for every occasion for many years here in the area. Their work is top rate. Prices are extremely competitive. You will not find better arrangements and better prices for every type of event you could think of. Barton Flower Shop for your floral needs. And lastly, Ford of Uniontown. Ford of Uniontown treats their customers in, with individual care and paramount concern. The Ford of Uniontown knows that you have a high expectation when buying a vehicle, and as a car dealer, they enjoy the challenge of meeting and exceeding those standards each and every time a customer comes in to Ford of Uniontown. Allow Ford of Uniontown to demonstrate their commitment to excellence here in Fayette County, Pennsylvania. Ready for second half action. And it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out, Tony. We'll look for some higher intensity from the Johnson and Wales Wildcats, try to force some turnovers, maybe extend the defense a little bit. Might result in, in the opportunity for them to create said turnovers and get some easy hoops on their own side of the basketball court. Well, they're definitely going to need some stops, there's no doubt. I mean, being down 20, but... As I mentioned, I mean, I, I'm sure that this is a team that's not extremely frequently playing any type of zone defense. You know, they're big, they're rangy, their speed. I, I'm sure they play man-to-man -man in most cases. So I think to go to the zone, I think it would probably be a little uncomfortable for them, but it might be something that they need to do here in this second half. We'll see coming out. But it looks like they're still in man. But they are going to extend it out. Yes. Maybe pick up full court. Almost a travel to begin things. Controlling there, Jerron Dawson Johnson being harassed by P.J. Gill. He'll get it to the hoop, though, with a floater off the hoop. No good. Gets his own rebound and, again, almost got away with a walk. But coming out of the pack now is K.J. Madden McAfee, and he hands it off to Hobson. So Madden McAfee with the assist to Hobson. Quick two points for Johnson and Wales. Yeah, and you can feel. I mean, I don't know what Coach Larkin told him at halftime, but whatever he told him, they came out with extreme intensity here in this second half. He's yelling at him from the bench. All three-pointer on the way, and Silverberg quiets things with a three from the corner. Yeah, that's his 56 made three of the year. Nice move to the hoop with the left. Unable to finish, though, was P.J. Gill. Got himself to the rack, but could not put it to sleep. No, and he had it too. Easy layup, and you can't miss those being down 21 here. Now. I'm, yeah, 21 right now. A lot of movement inside. There's a lot of contact on that drive to the hoop. That's going to be a blocking foul, I believe, on pull. It is. That's going to be his second. First team foul of the half against Johnson and Wales. Aggressive drive to the hoop there by Amir Biddle. And you can see Johnson and Wales turned up the defense, but you can see Wilkes-Barre too. They're just trying to run clock. That shot clock was down under 10 at that trip. Offensive board put back, can't get it to go. Now we got a foul called. 
on the boards there for Penn State. Wilkes-Barre was William Pierce. They're going to call it on Cresswell. Wow. It's just, actually, I actually thought William Pierce was over the back, but they saw it differently. So that's going to be the third foul on Cresswell. A lot of shooting foul, so out of bounds. Back to Penn State, Wilkes-Barre. Silverberg with the move. Finds Williams at the foul line. That's going to be a, a foul. Wow. Ooh. That's going to be on pool. Madden McAfee. Oh, McAfee. Okay. Well, that's his first, which is a good thing, but wow. I thought they could. They might even say he was shooting, too. Oh, my. I'm not sure about that one. And he is. Wow. Yeah, pool's not too happy. Nor He's got to be careful. <laughs> Coach Larkin not real happy either. Williams with his first points of the second half. Makes him three for five at the line. Well, game high, team high. 17 for Williams. And smooth at the line. Six foot nine senior forward from Detroit, Michigan. Looks like he could play for Michigan. No kidding. Not Michigan, Michigan State, that's Michigan, for sure. Yeah. He's the kind of player they would like, I'm sure. To nice. the hoop, score it. Nice drive and finish that time by Kajon Madden McAfee. Give him two with a chance at the three point play. Foul called on Silverberg. That's his second. Yeah, team fouls. Not very many. Nobody in foul trouble for Wilkes-Barre. The only real person in foul trouble on the Johnson Wales side is Cresswell. McAfee no good on the foul shot. And out of bounds off of Wilkes-Barre. It will be back to the Wildcats. And that's a fortunate break for them. They need as many points as they can get missing that foul shot. Hopefully they can convert here two or three. There's a two. Fake the handoff, sh shoot the two by Cresswell. Another defensive rebound now by Wilkes-Barre. Good ball movement or off the ball movement by the offense by Wilkes-Barre. Picking away, clearing the area, creating space for the drive and the dish. Kick out now for the three. In and out, no good. Rebound pulled down again by Wilkes-Barre. That's time Pierce. It's a steal away, but retrieved by Dawson Johnson. Yeah, Hobson almost had a steal. Clock down to 14. Johnson with the three, and after all that mess, Dawson Johnson for three. Two threes for him in the contest. Good baseline drive again, all kind of contact. They're gonna have a foul called now. Looks like it's gonna be on Biddle. Yeah, I think they're gonna call Biddle. He tried to draw that charge, but he was inside that circle. I'm not the, so sure I like the circle. The in there. infamous restricted area. Yeah, I'm not so sure I like that, but I mean, I thought he had pretty good position, but he got called for the body, could not draw the charge, and it's going to send Madden McAfee back to the line. Knocks down the first one. 55-32, Penn State, Wilkes-Barre still on top by 23 as he misses the second. That's going to be out of bounds back to Johnson and Wales. Yeah, they're, they're getting their chances here, Gary. I mean, <laughs> if they're yeah. going to cut into this lead at all, they've got to convert. Got to hit the free throws and got to make the easy baskets underneath. Good play out of bounds, finishing with Marley Poole at the hoop. Beautifully conceived out of bounds play there by Johnson and Wales. Yeah, Poole just worked off of that screen. Hobson at the top, great job. Way out on top, Williams. Strong with the ball, Williams. He is, and I'm sure Johnson and Wales wouldn't mind him staying out there outside the three-point arc. He'll shoot the three, too strong. I'll let him have that as long as he wants to take it. Yep. 
Poole for three, got it. Poole carrying the load for Johnson and Wales, now with 14. And Poole's the same type of shooter, Gary. We mentioned about Hobson, but if Poole gets hot, he had five, point, uh, five made threes the other day against Southern Maine as well. Hobson had six. You need that action here now in his second half. We're down to 18. Now we got a foul in the lane. I believe that's going to be called on number 12, P.J. Gill, and that's his third. And he get called for the reach there. Now they're going to bring in the big fella back, LeVon Knight Souls. He's going to give Pierce a little breather. The twin towers underneath for wilkes -Bear. Got that right. Here comes Gill. They're going to bring in Malik Bullock to replace him. Gill with three fouls. He's got to be careful. Shot clock down to 10. Silverberg kicks it all the way out. Four seconds on the clock, long three, no good, and that's gonna be saved in by Penn State Wilkes-Barre. Good look on the backside, and he's a pounded in the foul. How did he get that to go? Good body control and finish there by Biddle. Really no way for the defender for Johnson Wales. That was pulled to stop his momentum and not foul. Well, that was a great look on the other side, though. So now Poole with three fouls. Baylark going to check in. They're going to take Cresswell out, give him a little breather. Coach Larkin just trying to find the right mix. and It's just been a tough task here tonight. This Wilkes-Barre team came out, and they're firing on all cylinders. Jackson Baylark, six foot four freshman forward from Marietta, Georgia. Biddle finishes the three-point play. Gives him 12. And as we said, McAfee had 18 of his 23 in the second half the other day. Hobson with the step back three, no good. Nice fight inside there by Poole. And he's going to be out of bounds with the foul called. He fell pretty hard. He might have caught his tailbone on the court, but. I believe that foul's on Williams. Yes, it is. That's his third. And maybe that's the strategy. Try to take it strong against him, get him in foul trouble. I'm well, not sure. It's not gonna, in the game. He can't make layups. That's right. <laughs> and they're going to they're gonna have David Rogers check in for Williams. They're going to give him a breather. They surely don't want to see him pick up his fourth foul. There's 15, 15 to go left in the second half. Well, you trade 6'9 six, for 6'6. Six, six. Rogers, a 6'6 six six senior forward from Perth. Amboy, New Jersey. Nice play again. Poole cannot finish. Wow. Right at the hoop, just could not get it to go. Yeah, that's tough. That's like giving points away there. It's travel. Yep. Definite. We're going to have Zerion Wilkins check in for Marley Poole. Poole's having a stellar game. He just couldn't get that to go. I think he got poked in the eye as well. I think that's why Coach Larkin took him out. Yeah, you really don't want to about worry about three fouls now. Down by 21 still with 14.55 to go on a running clock here in the second half of the championship game. Good take and finish. That's number three, Malik Bullock. Yeah, that was a great drive and dish there, though, by Madden McAfee. Just drove the lane, draw all three defenders to him, dump it down in the lane, and great finish by Bullock. Nice play. So let's see yeah. if... Silverberg might take another three here. Nice entry pass down to Biddle. Good recovery there on defense by Bullock. Ooh, near steal by McAfee. Oh. <laughs> Got to call those. Late night banking. <laughs> <laughs> LaVon Knight Souls with the three off glass from straight ahead. Yeah. He'll take it. <laughs> yeah, he'll take it. <laughs> Runner no good short and Souls with the rebound. Souls, fantastic game off the bench. Biddle, no, no need to take the three at this point. 60 to 39. Wilkes Bear on top and in control. He thought about it though, there's no doubt about that. 
Clock to nine. It's been moved off glass, no good. Rebound to Bullock. Comes back trailing by 21. It's Wilkins, he got pushed. Yes, he did. He called the travel. Ooh. Wow. Whoa. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not sure he would have blocked if he didn't get bumped. Uh, I'm in agreement with you. Media timeout. Gary Frankhauser along with Tony Anula. Happy to bring you the USCAA basketball action here from Penn State Fayette Campus in Uniontown, Pennsylvania, the Division II National Championship. And coming up after tonight, the Division I, both men's and women's action will be beginning here at Penn State Fayette. A lot of games on tap for tomorrow and all the way through the weekend to crown a Division I National Champion in both categories. Sure, Tony will have a lot of games coming up here. <laughs> I'm on and four games on Friday, Gary. There you go. Duh. In the men's division tomorrow, I don't have the women's bracket, but in the men's division, you got Bryant and Stratton Buffalo against Clinton College at 12 o'clock here on the first game. First men's game, I should say. Stratford University, Bluefield State College at the 4 o'clock game. Oakwood University against University of Maine, Fort Kent at six. And Florida National, the number one seed versus Bryant and Stratton, Albany, the number eight seed at eight o'clock tomorrow night here in the main gym. So full slate of games. Come on out to the main arena here at Penn State. You will see good basketball, that's guaranteed. Well, that's a given, we've seen, we saw a good game this afternoon, that's for sure. We saw a lot of good games in this tournament. Biddle to the hoop, nice dish, foul, and no bucket. So at the hoop was number 15, David Rogers. Nice dish by Biddle. Rogers couldn't finish, but that foul is called on. That was on Wilkins. Wilkins. Yep. That's his first. Team fifth. And one sixth, thing. I'm sorry. One thing that's a little surprise here, Gary, for the first time in five years, it's the first time that Berkeley College of New York is not in the championship. They were four-time defending champions and got knocked out actually in the quarterfinal round by Penn State York. Got a lane violation there on Wilkes-Barre going in a little too early, nullifies that shot. So did not get credit for a good foul shot there for David Rogers, but back now comes Johnson and Wales to the hoop, knocked away that time by Rogers, going high to swat that one off the glass. It didn't look like there was too much of a drop off between him and Williams coming in there. Williams has hey. been able to pretty much control the paint as well. And Rogers is a senior. Both he and Williams, seniors from Michigan. Tough lineup to break into. Yeah, no kidding. Soles off glass, no good. That's going to be a foul going the other way. They must have called a push on Biddle. And that's going to be his third. Yeah, he just kind of used that forearm to gain advantage to try to go for the rebound, gain position. 12 35 to go. Johnson and Wales with just 12 second half points there so far. Same 13 for Wilkes-Barre, so action has very much slowed down offensively here in the second half. That ball's out of bounds back to Johnson and Wales. Bullock's looking like he got scratched or something, but he's gonna trigger it in underneath. Hand back to the corner. No, you know he's going to launch that one. Oh, yeah. Hobson with the long three short off the iron. Well, he had space. He didn't have a defender on him for five feet, wide open at the top of the key. They're going to need a bunch of those to get back in this one. You're right. He's able to knock down two of them towards the end of the first half, but no such luck here in the second. You also have to like from uh, – Wilkes-Barre and their offense, they, they make the easy pass. There's a nice behind the back pass 
from Souls to Rogers. But you don't see him try to make too many difficult passes there. Turnovers are at a minimum in the, in the set offense. Three on the way, no good that time by Wilkins. Fought for and corralled there by Bite Baylark, but he gives it away. Two on one to the hoop again, no good. Pulled down by Bullock. Bring it ahead, pass too far. You know, he had, he had numbers, he just should have taken his time. Probably would have got an easy layup out of that to try to do the head fake thing and the no look pass. Just a little too far in front of Wilkins. That could be a costly turnover. They need the points, no doubt, Gary, down 23. Poole checks back in for Johnson Wales along with number 33, Antonio Smith. First time we've seen him this evening, six foot seven junior forward from Covington, Virginia. West Georgia Tech High School. And Dominique Stevenson checked in for Wilkes-Barre, the 6'2 junior guard from Rochester, New York. Near turnover. Souls, you gonna take another one? Bank it in again? No. Good defense. Yeah, good defense that time by Johnson and Wales. Here comes Poole. Try to do it himself, he'll drop it back. All kind of contact again, nothing called. There's a smack to the head, and they finally had to call that one. It's <laughs> <laughs> Sirion Wilkins, he's fearless. He's gonna take the ball down the lane no matter what. That foul's called on number 15, Rogers, his second. Well, still a lot of fouls to give. As we mentioned, only Biddle with three. I'm sorry, Jordan Williams with three as well on Wilkes-Barre side. Zion off the mark, a 65% free throw shooter. As Biddle checks back in and Rogers will take a break. Yeah, with Johnson and Wales only four for 10 from the line here tonight, make it five for 11. Giving up points at the line as well. Can't get the easy layups to go. Missing foul shots, just struggling here tonight, trying to get anything going. Wilkes-Barre maintaining this 20 to 22 point lead all the sec throughout the second half with 10-16 to go. 62 to 40, long three on the way, no good. And rebound pulled down there offensively by number four, Dominique Stevenson. And I believe that will put them Ooh. into the bonus. Whoa, that's, that's, that's going to be huge. Pool, yeah. That's huge with 10 10 to go. Yeah, he might as well leave him in now, though, down 22. Yeah, they're going to have Madden McAfee check in for pool. Yeah, I'm not sure I agree with that. At this point, you need whatever offensive firepower you can come up with. You know, and he's been their firepower. There's no doubt about that. Stevenson at the line. One and one hits the first. Stevenson, only a 47% free throw shooter. Looked pretty good on that one. Pool checks out, as we said, the leading scorer for Johnson and Wales with 14 tonight. That one looked like a 47% yeah. free throw shooter. <laughs> Pulled it back. Yeah. All kind of, whoa, don't come in there against Souls and not expect to receive a rejection letter. Yeah, he can, he can pop. There's no doubt about that. Big fella. Biddle will reset with 10 seconds on the shot clock. Got to travel. Yeah, no doubt. Just kind of lost control. Trying to do a little too much. I've got to catch myself, Tony, refereeing from up here, making the calls <laughs> before the officials do. <laughs> but that will be a media timeout under 10 minutes with 9.38 to go here in the second half. Penn State, Wilkes-Barre, 63. Johnson and Wales, Wildcats, 40. Johnson and Wales coming up here from Charlotte, North Carolina. My daughter lives in the Charlotte area. There you go. Didn't you, didn't you go visit a few I weeks did. ago? Yeah. I did. 
barbecue wine tours down around Elkin, North Carolina. Nice. Beautiful, beautiful country down there. Enjoy that area every time we go down. And Penn State, Wilkes-Barre up the Wilkes-Barre Scranton area. Also a very historical area in Pennsylvania. Well, they've had a fantastic year. They were they lost in the PSUAC championship game against Penn State York in overtime, 57-56. York able to get a tap in with 1.8 seconds to go. Wilkes-Barre 18 and 1 in conference play. Had a fantastic year coming in overall at 24 and 5 on the season. And they're just continuing to extend this. Right now, having it in control, 63 to 40, with 9.38 remaining here in the second half of the championship game, national championship game in Division II of the USCAA basketball tournament. Good pass inside and finish by Antonio Smith. Smith. His first two. Seldom used. Comes off the bench and gets in the book. And Wilkes-Barre just taking their time, running the shot clock down, game clock as well. No hurry, just get a good shot, and there's another one. Tip back in that time to the hoop was Biddle. And nice job by Biddle following up that shot, that missed shot. Got him for 13. Yes. Madden McAfee looked to create here, dumps it down again. And they give it to Smith, let him do it. Well, hey, he's getting results off the bench. I'd keep it up. Absolutely. Feed can't, him, he's hungry. Can't trade hoops at this point, though, if you're Johnson and Wales. They've got to look for some defensive stops, and they're trying, but just the back screens and the pick and rolls are working out quite well for Wilkes-Barre. He's going to have to shoot that anyway. Three seconds on a shot clock. Long one on the way, no good. Hobson tried to rebound it, knocked off his own, his own teammate and out of bounds, so... With three seconds to go on the shot clock, they take the long three and now have a new 30. Coach Larkin now trying to go with the bigs. He's got Hobson, Cresswell, and Smith underneath. Trying gotta, to create gotta, some size. Yeah, you yeah. got to bring pull back here any anytime soon, too. Oh, yeah. He's been their offense, really. Near steal. Bullock. Playing aggressive defense, almost got away with one. Motion offense now against the man to man defense. Long three on the way, almost another bank in. That went off the mark by White. Back comes Johnson Wells. Long corner pass to the hoop. <laughs> Thought about it being blocked and really affected his shot. Going to the hoop that time was PJ Gill, and he looked at Sproul. I'm sorry, Souls across the way. Souls backed up, <laughs> but it still affected the shot. I would agree, and you're going to have pool check back in along with Wilkins. Going to foul on P.J. Gill. That's going to be his fourth. Yeah, Gill just, now I think that was a frustration foul there as well. The 6'4 freshman from Virginia Beach missed that bunny because Souls intimidating him underneath. I don't think he's too happy with himself right now. And at the line is going to be Biddle. Trying to add to his total of 14 and does. No, it's not, I'm sorry, that's not Biddle. That's Stevenson, isn't it? Yes. So Stevenson yeah. will now have five points. Try to make it six. Off the mark. Knocked away. Good hustle. And that's going to be a foul. Who's it going to be on? Call that on number one, Khalil White. His second, team sixth. Actually, hey, we're going to make a correction, Gary. That was actually Jaden Hampton who went to the line. We couldn't see. 
He's got the long dreads. We couldn't see his number, oh, okay. but he's number three. So the six-foot junior guard from Fayetteville, Arkansas. I'll have to get that back up in the right spot here then. Yep, he's got his first point of the night. Travel, nope, no. foul. Wilkins, he's battling hard underneath there, just trying to establish position. He's going to draw a foul on number 20. That's going to be on Souls. That's his first. Wow, aggressive player. Lavon Knight Souls just picking up his first foul at the line. Zyron Wilkins. Wilkins. No field goals yet tonight. One for three from the line. They're going to bring Jordan Williams back in. 7.01 to go. Take out Souls. Take out Khalil White. Put Silverberg and Williams back in for Wilkes Bear. So for Johnson and Wales, Smith, Cresswell, Wilkins, Poole, and Hobson. Wilkins 0 for 2 on that trip. Still trailing by 22, 66 to 44. Wilkes Bear content to use clock. 6.49 to go. Should use the full 30 every time now. I would agree. And the way they've been offensive rebounding, they're going to use 30 and get another rebound if they miss. Now to the hoop and getting fouled. That time was Amir Biddle. That's Cresswell's fourth. 6'6", six, six senior forward. So three players for Johnson and Wales with four fouls. Pull, hop, I'm sorry, Gill and Cresswell. And this will be Biddle with. Yes. We can see his number. 13. This is just his second. Four for six at the line. Yeah. Biddle with 14, though. Williams with 18. Two leaders for Wilkes Bear. Trickles the, that yeah, one in. Yeah, got the roll. Hobson now looking to try to create. Nowhere to go. Good defense there by Biddle. Spin move. Nowhere to With the finish off the bench. Antonio Smith providing a spark for Johnson and Wales. Bucket and the foul. Smith coming in. That was a, a lovely entry pass there by Zerion Wilkins, though. Drew the defenders. Went to the right side of the lane. Drew the defenders and just a little dump down pass there for Antonio Smith for the easy layup. Nice job by Zerion. Foul called on Dominique Stevenson. Score it. Hey. Where was Smith in the first half? No kidding. He's got seven off the bench. Great job by Antonio. Down to closing in on six minutes to play. 20-point advantage, 67-47. A lot of dribbling out front. Not much penetration now for Wilkes-Barre. Looks for that backdoor pass. Corner three on the way. Got it. Dominic Stevenson with three. His second made three of the night. Gives him seven. Pool stops and pops, no good. Now the run out again by Wilkes-Barre. Smartly pull it up. Use some clock. Yeah, very smart. Actually, Stevens had an easy chance for a layup, but uh, smartly pulled it back out and ran a little more time off of the clock. I think that's uh, Hayden Hampton. I'm sorry, Jaden Hampton, who did check in. That's that time. Yeah, I think it is too. That's six foot junior guard from Fayetteville, Arkansas. Makes his second free throw out of three. Foul was called on Hobson. Yeah, we've got Stevenson and Hampton and Biddle. So two, three, and four in your lineup, and they all have the long dreads. We're having a tough time seeing their numbers. <laughs> That's another completed foul shot for Hampton. He's three for four at the line. 
Three on the way, count it for Cajon Madden McAfee. Gives him six. Yeah, all in the second half. This is Stevenson. Hands off to Silverberg. Go into a kind of a weave offense here to use clock. Look for that high screen. Good bounce pass. Biddle will finish. Biddle, the senior from Arlington. He's having a strong game. Nice move. Nice move with the dish, the scoop. I think he took one across the head there. Madden McAfee, nice move. I think he took one in the eye or even on the nose. I think that foul was called on Biddle. That's his uh, fourth. Now at this stage with 4.49 to go. Not so sure that's a huge factor. They're under five minutes. That's going to be a media timeout. So with that timeout, 4.49 to go. Penn State, Wilkes-Barre 74. Johnson and Wales 52. 22 point advantage. Penn State, Wilkes-Barre in control throughout. Going to be a monumental task for Johnson and Wales to come back at this point. Time not their ally. No, and they really just haven't shot well all, in, all night long. And as you said, Gary, we, we talked about it early on. They, they averaged 33 point tries a game, and they just, you're right, you live by the three and you die by the three. And they took um, 12 in the first half. I'm sorry. Yeah, 12, and they only made two, as I recall. Right. Right, and those were both, both by Hobson towards the end of the half. And really, they haven't shot that many threes in the second half. No. Going more inside, but uh, they've been it. trading hoops the entire second half with Wilkes-Barre. Yeah, and it's pretty tough. 20-point halftime lead is now out to 22. 22. McPhee hits. He's kind of come to life here in the second half. Right. He's got nine. This is Hampton. He will control out all the way out in the corner. For the half court, good stop and go. Can't get the runner to fall as Jackson Baylark with the rebound. And they're going to be a foul on the drive, and that going to be, I believe, on Stevenson. It is. He kind of kind of threw a little hip check there as Madden McAfee was going to the basket. It's gonna Stevenson be his rubbing his second. <laughs> yeah, he's rubbing his left knee there. Might have caught a little knee to knee. It's going to be one and one now. So McAfee. McAfee a 78% free throw shooter. Ten points here in the second half. Similar to what he did the other day. We mentioned he scored 18 of his 23 against York in the second half. And now he's trying to do the same thing here against Wilkes-Barre to keep his team in contention. Whoa. Almost a steal. And now that's going to be knocked out of bounds back to Wilkes-Barre. Wow. <laughs> Poole trying to plead his case. It wasn't off me. Ball was just kind of in no man's land. Coach Larkin telling everybody guard their man. He needs a uniform. Yeah. I don't know There's why that, that was a long pass to nowhere. Yeah, that was a turnover. Mad McAfee feeling a little bit here. He's going to go to the hoop with the left, finish again. Nice job. Gives him 12 all in the second half. Now they're going to Actually Larkin. 13, I'm sorry. Yeah, Larkin's going to put Hobson back in there and hope he, he's hoping that he caught a little fire on the bench trying to come out. I'm sure he's telling him to throw up a few threes, try to get us back into this game. They're down 17. Still no pool, though. Oh, yeah, he's in. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, he's back in. Silverberg off glass. Wow, that was a running, running one-hander. That was a running one-hander. He was lucky to get off of that. Whoa, whoa. 
Good thing he called his defensive foul because the offense would have followed. So that's going to be called on number three, Jaden Hampton. And send Madden McAfee to the line again. You know, he's getting his practice at this foul shooting this second half. Five for seven. That's what I have him as, too. Five for seven. He's got 14 points all in the second half. Just trying to carry this Johnson and Wales team all by himself. The 5'11 sophomore guard, Harrisonburg, Virginia. Cresswell and Hobson check in for Johnson and Wales. If I'm not mistaken, wasn't Harrisonburg the home of Ralph Sampson? You're right. Mm -hmm. Nice catch there by Knights Souls. Silverberg getting a screen way out on top. Dribbles away from the traffic with three minutes and eight seconds on a running clock. Silverberg looking for another running one-hander. Gets it way out for the three now. Off glass, no good. Pull with the rebound. Doesn't have numbers. Good defense back for Wilkes-Barre. McAfee with the three, no good. Knight Souls will bring it out and control. They're going to call a foul now on Hobson. Yep. It'll be his fourth. Yep, so now you've got four Wildcats with four fouls each. Double bonus now. You know, Souls, we said, only came in as a 54% free throw shooter, but busted all four that he shot here tonight. From deep range. Yes. Uh, we did it. It's yes, our we fault. Did. Yes, 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 yes. If Sue part us, we would we would be hearing it. Yes. But he'll knock this one down. Stay with his average 54%. Oh. oh. Double eye jazz. Oh yeah, no kidding. Pool for three. Squared up nicely, but couldn't get it to go. He'll take it in again. Now finally get a roll, so Marley Poole. Poole adding to his stats. He's got, he got two points on that trip and three offensive rebounds. 16 points. Down to two minutes and 10 seconds to go. Silverberg content to just dribble out of trouble, take it in himself. Kick it out to the corner, to the hoop, and score it. Wow. And I believe that's going to be all for uh, Marley Poole, too. Yeah, that was Fouled out with two minutes and one second to go. Score the hoop for number four, Dominic Stevenson. And Marley Poole, the junior guard, six foot. Junior, six foot three, junior guard from Columbia, South Carolina. They'll take a seat here in the championship game. Good effort. Great effort. He had 16. Stevenson makes the traditional three point play and the lead back up to 18. Under two to go. Wow. No foul called on that after the three point shot by McAfee. Went to the ground with contact and no foul called. 79-64, minute 40 to go. Here's the aggressive defense we were looking for out of Johnson and Wales early in the second half, and that will result in a timeout being called by Coach Hammett for Penn State Wilkes-Barre with a minute 34 to go, 79-64. Cut it down to 15. Cut it down to 15, but I think just a little, a little too, too little, little, too late. Yep, I think so. Going to have, I think Coach Larkin going to go to his bench again. I think you're going to see Chris Greer come in. Chris, the 6'1 junior guard from Saltsville, Virginia, coming in averaging two points a game. He's going to get some action here in this championship game. Yeah, and it was just one of those things. Johnson and Wells just couldn't get their offense rolling, Gary. And even when they did, they just couldn't make any shots. And 
I yep. think the first half was pretty indicative. Jordan Williams, Knight Souls, and Biddle just dominating underneath. They could do pretty much whatever they wanted to do. And that ended up being the deficit that Johnson and Wells can't overcome. 20-point halftime lead just pretty much stayed there the entire second half till the last minute and a half with Jave cut it down to 15, but going to be basically a five-possession game with a minute 34 to go. Right. And I think Coach Larkin, I think he's signaling. I think he wants Greer to try to commit a couple fouls. That's what he's in there for, no yeah. doubt. Yeah, <laughs> he's got five to give. Might as well use him. Really, Souls was the guy you want to foul. I would agree. Not Silverberg. He's almost an 80% free throw shooter, but he'll be at the line. Syrian Wilkins with the foul. Double bonus, two shot opportunity for Silverberg. Working with seven points here in the contest. Line drive. Yeah, not a whole lot of arc on that shot. But finds the bottom of the net. Silverberg was in the three-point contest, representing wilkes Bear. Too strong on the second. Hobson now, he's going to launch a long one. You can tell that was coming. Rebound pulled down and a foul quickly there by Greer. And he's that in will. the book. Send Stevenson to the line. So I think we're going to do a lot of walking back and forth here for the last minute 22. Nah, I think we will, but I think it'll get to that point too where Johnson and Wales will just realize it's inevitable. Yeah, you hate to say that, but they had a fantastic season, though. There's no doubt. So. They need to bust a couple threes on a couple trips. Make this game a little more interesting. Stevenson, next one. 11 now for Stevenson. Blocked away that time by Jordan inside. Another foul called. This time on Greer again. Yeah, I think it's on Greer again. And that's going to send Stevenson back to the line. And he just left there. Three for five. Deja vu and Groundhog Day. <laughs> All in one. That's it. Happy Ash Wednesday to everybody. Yeah. Stevenson will add to his total, averaging just... 2.3 per game, now with 12. Yeah, he's giving them great minutes off the bench. Pretty much Wil the wilkes pair bench total. They've played fantastic. you got to figure he's come off the bench and has 13. Souls comes off the bench. He's got 14. Just two deep teams. And Hobson, just he just can't get it to go here today. Two made threes. That's going to be on Greer again. He's going to use all five of those, I believe. Oh, yeah. Why not? 59 seconds ago, wilkes barre team starting to celebrate on the bench. Yeah, they're pretty giddy about things right now, under a minute to go. 19-point lead. Yeah. A couple seniors on this squad. You've got... Jerron Dawson Johnson, William Pierce, Amir Biddle, David Rogers, Mata Brua, Jordan Williams. Got a ton of seniors on this team, so they're quite happy with the way things are going. They're gonna end they're gonna end their careers with the championship they desired. And Williams. Four for 
for four in the second half. Six for eight overall from the line. Greer, let him shoot it. I would. Yeah, they're going to call off the dogs now. Nope. Said that too early. Yeah, I did. McAfee so. gets the foul now. Yeah. Well, you're down 21, 46 seconds to go. I got a feeling we'll probably be pr pretty quiet. And I got a feeling, too, that Coach Hammond will go to the bench here. Yeah, he's going to send in. Biddle and Rogers. He's going to take Jordan Williams out. Williams going to finish with 20 here tonight. Fantastic game by Jordan Williams. Silverberg will come out also. Silverberg, the junior, exiting with eight points. The little White, one for two at the line. Three on the way, no good by McAfee. Cresswell. Opportunity there for Cresswell. Out of bounds. Congratulations to both teams. Fantastic season by both. Tough to see. Johnson and Wells. It's always tough to lose a championship game, but they played fantastically. 24 seconds. They'll have to do something here because the shot clock is down to 13. They're yeah. going to have to have a turnover. That's going to be a double dribble, isn't it? I thought it was, but it doesn't make any difference now. Shot clock violation. Four seconds to go, three, three and a half seconds. Johnson Wells will have the opportunity to take it out of bounds. With three seconds to go, 86 to 64, dominating performance by Penn State Wilkes-Barre. The Lions under coach LaShawn Hammond as time runs out. That's our final 86-64 as Penn State Wilkes-Barre the Division II National Champions for the USCAA. Congratulations to both squads for an outstanding season as Wilkes-Barre will be receiving the National Championship trophy. No shame in the runner-up for Johnson and Wales, fifth seed coming into the tournament. Outstanding showing by the Johnson and Wales Wildcats. As we finish up these statistics here, they set up for the award ceremony down on the court. We'll get you your final statistics here before we wind things up. As the Penn State Wilkes-Barre Lions join hands at midcourt. Obvious jubilation. Yeah, they're extremely happy, and they, you can't blame them, Gary. Absolutely not. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome USC Executive Director Matt Sims and Executive Director Michael Whitney for the presentation of the 2019 Men's Division II Basketball National Championship. Division II National Champion, well, Penn State, Wilkes-Barre Lions. I'm sure they would like to have that PSUAC title also, but. First, the senior guard from Penn State, York. With that, they're extremely happy for the national championship. Looking for some kind of a ceremony here at half court as they surround themselves. They're also announcing tournament players. Levon Knight Souls. Going to receive his all tournament award. A sophomore guard from Johnson and Wells, Kawan Madden McAfee. Kajan Madden McAfee also getting an award for Johnson and Wales all tournament team. And we'll 
Your final numbers here for Penn State Wilkes-Barre. Leading score for Wilkes-Barre was Jordan Williams. He had 20. Amir Biddle with 17. Dominique Stevenson with 13. LaVon Knight Souls had 14. Khalil White, Jaden Hampton with three each off the bench. Jerron Dawson Johnson had six on two made threes. David Rogers with two. And Kevin Silverberg with eight. They scored 47 in the first, 39 in the second for their total of 86. They had five made threes, and they were 25 for 40 from the foul line, Gary. 40 foul shots, that's a ton. Yeah, a lot at the end of the game, but you're right, that is a ton of foul shots, and they uh, hit the majority of them. Yes, they did. For the Johnson and Wells Wildcats, who end up 21 and 11 overall, they were led by Kawan Madden McAfee, who had 18, and they were all in the second half. Marley Poole had 16. As Jordan Williams receives the MVP award for Penn State Wilkes-Barre. Yeah, and it was justified, there's no doubt. So as mentioned, Marley Poole, 16. Kawan, Kawan Madden McAfee, 18. Hobson had eight on two made threes. Antonio Smith off the bench with seven on the second half. Loris Lawson with two off the bench. Christian Criswell, four. P.J. Gill, two. Malik Bullock with six and Zerion Wilkins with one, 27 in the first, 37 in the second. For their total of 64, they were 11 for 19 from the line, and they had five made threes. They were five for 27 from the three-point line, Gary. And Man, that's just, a killer. Just tough shooting. Outshot by Wilkes-Barre. Wilkes-Barre was 28 for 59 from the field, a 47% clip. Wow, Johnson and Wells, were, they were only 24 for 70, 34% for the game, and it just doomed them. Wilkes-Barre also out-rebounded Johnson and Wells, 49 to 41. They had 34 defensive rebounds to 15 offensive rebounds. Rebounds for Johnson and Wells, 18 offense, 23 defense for their total of 41. So pretty... Dominating performance here by Wilkes-Barre here tonight. And they had a good game plan coming in. They pounded it down low early to the uh, their oversized underneath players and really kind of set the tone and created that early lead that they never relinquished. And uh, that contributed to their strong shooting in the first half of 54%. Second half not quite as good at 47%, but still very good. And then if you look up at the top, on the Johnson and Wales statistics and 30% in the first half, 34% in the second half. You have to give a great deal of credit to the defense for Penn State Wilkes-Barre. They were aggressive, did not allow open threes, and even the threes that were kind of um, somewhat open, they were still contested, which resulted in the low percentage from the three-point range for Johnson and Wales. I would agree, and they just, they just couldn't find an offensive rhythm, and they tried pretty much every combination that they could off of the bench, but they just uh, just couldn't get it going. And really, just kudos to Wilkes-Barre. They played a fantastic game, and they were just dominant from beginning to end. And as the uh, stu the uh, student athletes from Penn State Wilkes-Barre received their national championship awards underneath the hoop and in the backdrop of the USCAA banner. Jubilation, well deserved for the Penn State Wilkes-Barre Lions. Yeah, they had a fantastic season. They end up, you know, they end up with a season total 25 and five overall. As we mentioned, they were 18 and one in conference play. Great season, nothing to sneeze at, that's for sure. As we said, a great record in any conference, any level of basketball. We talked about this before, Tony, but uh, you come to these tournaments in this uh, division, the USCAA, and you see these athletes that are outstanding, outstanding athletes just that may be a little bit shorter, maybe a little bit slower than Division I, but there's a lot of these guys that probably could make their way onto Division II, Division III, or even Division I basketball squads. And... Uh, there's no question there's a lot of talent. Oh, no doubt. Like I said, we've seen some fantastic basketball, and we're going to see some more here 
throughout the rest of this week when the Division I playoffs start tomorrow. And we invite you all to come back to the USCAA Basketball Network. We're going to wrap things up here from the National Championship Division II ball game with Penn State Wilkes-Barre winning 86-64 to over the Johnson and Wales men's team. It's been Gary Frankhauser on the play-by-play, -play. Tony Anul alongside. We thank you for listening and invite you back for more basketball on the USCAA Basketball Network. Good night, everyone.